Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is my weekend video blog. Now, these blogs are doing pretty well. The last blog last week had 252 views. You can see it right down there. That was the second blog post I did, and the first one, go back a little bit here, had 232 views. That's pretty good. It's not as good as some of my other more current videos, and you see they're a bit higher, but it's still pretty good. I think that we may keep this thing going. Looks like it's going to be a possible success in here. But I'll keep on doing these at least clear through the end of the year. We'll see how it goes, and I expect I'll be putting this in as a permanent feature, making that decision sometime in during December. Okay, if, if you like these blog posts, make sure you click that like button so I know that you appreciate these things and that I should keep on doing this stuff. Also, make sure you share these blog posts to your social media. Just click on the share button and then share this out to social media. And also, don't forget to check out my complete training courses, and the link is right down there in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this week's blog post. This past week I've been pretty busy doing a lot of maintenance kind of stuff. Cleaning up my computer, doing a lot of refreshing in there, setting up some new hardware, trying to get things set up for the big push. And for me that happens the last quarter of the year. A lot of new software programs show up in October, and then I spend three months trying to get caught up on all of those things, getting new training out and so forth. So I'm getting everything set up for that. But even with all of that, I'm still looking into some new things. Just a few things up here across the top. You see these? One here is this pattern suppressor. We'll be talking about this in just a moment here. Really interesting. I'll be doing a full video on this next week. This is a filter used in Photoshop to suppress patterns like that. And I'll show you how this works here in this video in just a little bit. The next one is that BlueStacks 4 just came out. We'll be back to this in just a bit as well. And also Aurora HDR 2019 is now on pre-order through the first week of October. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll start off here by talking about this pattern suppressor stuff in here, what this is all about. A lot of times if you're doing photo restoration work, you may come across pictures with repeating patterns like this. A couple of reasons for this. One is you may have a scan. Possibly it's a scan from a newspaper or a scan from a magazine. You get that dot pattern in there, that repeating dot pattern. Another possibility is that you're taking a picture of a photo that was printed originally onto textured paper. Kind of a linen paper was really, really popular a long time ago, and a canvas kind of a texture, very, very popular as well. All these things create repeating patterns like this, and they can really mess up the quality of your photo restoration. This can be handled, but to do this it requires a special filter. Now Photoshop doesn't come with one, but I did find one here. It's called Pattern Suppressor. Right now it's a version 2.5, and this is fairly new and works with Photoshop 64-bit. This has been tested on 2018. Actually, I have it on my 2018. I'll show you that in just a second here. And it does some amazing stuff. It's a great filter. It's also completely free. So there's no cost to this one. It's fairly easy to set up and it does a real nice stuff. Let me show you real fast. I'll do this demonstration right here. Real fast version of this demonstration right here. You can see what this does. And then this coming week, I'll be doing a much longer video about how to use this really neat program. And of course, I'll have a link for this up here on the support page for this blog post. You can just go to that page and then grab that link right there. Okay, let's see what this does. I'll bring up 2018 here. I'll go Photoshop 2018 CC. There's that same picture that they used in theirs. Now, I have taken this thing. They had a PNG file. I just grabbed this out of their PDF help file, and then I converted this to RGB, which is a basic requirement. Now, the reason why this is only working in Photoshop is that it requires channels to run. It requires you know, active channels like we have over here. So this will work in Photoshop great. It will not work in Photoshop Elements, unfortunately, because Photoshop Elements doesn't have access to active channels. I am looking into some solutions for Photoshop Elements, which may require using another program instead and then working that into Photoshop Elements. For instance, you can get some of these things. These are called FFT for Fast Fourier Transformation Filters. So these FFT filters, you can get some of these things for a free paint program called GIMP, which is actually very, very powerful, and it is free, and it does have the ability to use some of these things because it does do some channel stuff. So there's a definite possibility over there for elements. I'll be talking about that more next week. I'll be doing more 
experimentation on that this week. But for right now, I'm going to show you a real fast, quick preview. Now, again, it's easy to install, and I'll show the whole process of installation when I do the full video this next week, this coming week. But let me show you what this does. It's all set up to run as Photoshop Actions, which makes it very easy. I'll just bring up my Actions panel right down here. Here we are working with a grayscale image. There's our grayscale. And we'll do the normal suppression. Now this is in three steps. It does the basic suppression, figuring out it does all this really strange, kind of weird math stuff in here. It figures that out. You have to then do a little bit of an adjustment on that. You then apply that suppression and then merge that to the final version. So it's three steps plus a little, a little bit of real easy work on this. Okay, see what this does. So normal suppression, click the play button. A little bit of information here, you probably should read this the first few times you're doing this to get comfortable with this. Click on continue. Now it's doing its magic right now. It's analyzing the picture, making new layers, making some masks on those layers and stuff. And it ends up with, let me just get rid of that, ends up with this kind of strange looking thing. Now what this is, this is a specialty map or a specialized map that handles the luminance channels, this repeating stars in here. This really is the, that repeating pattern showing up in here. Now on this is giving you a mask and you see we have these real hard lines, kind of kind of solid lines, horizontal, vertical, right through the middle here, a bright highlight in the middle. Then all these little stars poking out like that. These stars are the suppression part of this thing. That's again, that's the repeating pattern. We need though to keep this line here and that line here. So to do that, notice you're already on the star suppression layer on the layer mask, grab the black color and a paintbrush, and just come right in here, click and hold down the shift key, so you just pull straight down, and we'll just hide that one, and then same thing over here, there we go, pull it straight across, and then do a little cleanup right around the very middle. Now you need to do this on all of these, depending upon what you're seeing. Now notice how these stars are hidden now. I need to show the stars again. Let's go back here to the to the white. Right there, so white in the foreground. I'm just adjusting the layer mask on this. And where those little stars are crossing these lines, I need to show those again, except for that center one. And this, this process is repeated exactly the same way on anything that you do. It's the exact same process. A little bit right down here, a little bit right up in there. And that's really all there is to it. You just do that little quick cleanup. It takes you just a moment or two once you get used to this. Go back here to the actions again. And it's now apply the suppression. Click the play button. It goes through. It does that bit. Choose OK. And there you go. Now I didn't want this real fast. You can go back and tweak a little bit. But you can see there's a little bit of patterning showing up here. But not very much. Let's just apply that and that's the merge and trim last step and run and there we go let's now see what this did for us I'll zoom in fit screen there's the original and there it is after applying that filter it's an amazing tool for getting rid of those repeating patterns and does a great job and again I'll come back with a much more in-depth video about how this thing works this coming week so Real neat thing, and this is one I just recently came across, but it's a great tool for getting rid of those repeat patterns that are sometimes very annoying, and I haven't found anything else that will do this as well as this particular plugin does here. Okay, that's our main Photoshop. Let me go over here to BlueStacks. Now on the BlueStacks, this is something which I'm playing around with right now. I'm trying to find a good way to do recordings of a smartphone because there are a lot of neat apps on smartphones for Photoshop and I want to show how to use those but there's no real good way to record on a smartphone screen so I'm looking for alternatives on that. One that I've played around here with is BlueStacks. This actually isn't a very good solution for what I want to do unfortunately so I won't be using this one. This does though allow me to work with my Instagram account right on my computer. Let me bring up BlueStacks right there. So there's my Instagram account right here. I can actually open this up and work with Instagram right through BlueStacks right on my computer, making it a lot easier. It, it gets rid of a lot of those problems of having to 
do stuff with my computer, upload it to Dropbox or someplace, copy that over to my Instagram account. It's a real hassle doing all that through this smartphone. I can actually do it here. Now, I was first looking at this Lucidex program to show you this little thing here, 3D LUT. They have a real neat tool for making adjustments to images right on your smartphone. And I already want to show you that, but unfortunately, this just doesn't work here in Bluestacks. So I can't show you that yet. I'm still trying to find a good solution. I may need to upgrade to a little bit newer smartphone. Mine's about four years old right now. I may need to get a newer smartphone and try something else to mirror the smartphone on my computer. I'm still playing around with that. Once I get that all figured out and I'm happy with it, then I'll begin adding in some smartphone videos into my video rotation on the channel. But what I did want to show you, though, is the Bluestacks program. It's up to version 4 right now. Let me just close that out. Yep, exit that. So it's up to version 4. There we go. It just went to version 4 this, this week. And it's a great program, especially if you like playing games on your smartphone. It allows you to actually play your games full screen on your real large computer screen and not that real small little handheld screen on your smartphone. So it's great for gamers. It's a marvelous program for that. It's not really a good solution for the other stuff I want to show you. So I'm still working on this one, but if you're a gamer, if you like using your smartphone a lot, this is a real neat solution here. And better than that, it's free. So you can't really beat that. There's a link for this, of course, on my georgepearson.com site. And of course, also in the show notes for this blog post. Okay, last thing I just want to mention here quickly, is the Aurora HDR program out. The version 2019 is almost ready to come out. There's a pre-order going on right now for about $10 off, which is about 10% off. It's not a bad discount. Really fascinating program on bringing the most out of your images. It's got an Apple's Best Mac App Award down here, digital photo editor's choice. It's a very, very popular program, and they're coming out with version 2019 in just a couple of weeks. But it does this kind of thing. It takes your images and goes through, figures everything out, and allows you to push these into an HDR format with a lot of, as you see over here, a lot of options on that to really give you perfect control over all of the coloration, vibrancy, and so forth in your images. It's the best image program I've found for doing this kind of thing. It's not good for your, you know, your more creative types or project type people. We're really better over on Photoshop or Elements where you have all kinds of other tools to use. But if your main focus is being a photographer, this is a, a phenomenal choice. Here we go. Here's another little, little bit here using different filters and so forth to pull the most out of a picture. It also, of course, does regular HDR where you take several different exposures of an image and then this will blend them together using the best parts of each exposure to give you the best full range or the high dynamic range, the HDR, of the photograph that you want. Again, it's, it's a great program. It's fairly inexpensive and it's marvelous at really pulling out all of your imagery values and brightness and so forth. So it's one that you may want to take a look at if you are a, a serious photographer and you want to pull the most out of your images. This is a great program for doing that. And again, it's on pre-order right now, and version 2019 is going to be coming out pretty soon, just a couple of weeks or so. Okay, that's what I've got right now for this blog. I have a lot more on the next blog, but just a few things coming up. Again, we'll be looking at this. We'll be doing a full video on this. This is for Photoshop. We're doing a full video on this this coming week, and I'm looking into solutions for Photoshop Elements. When I find one that I'm happy with, I'll do a video on that as well. Okay, there you go. That's the blog for this week. And of course, don't forget to share this video. Click on that share button and share this blog post with your social media. Let's get as many people watching these blogs as possible. I think this is a real nice way for you to know what I'm thinking about, what I'm working on, what's coming up, and just staying up to date with the newest stuff that I'm hearing about. Okay, thanks again for watching my blog post. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.